All right, how you all doing today? Um, hope everybody's doing well. Um, this is just uh, part two of the video lecture for the uh, Supreme Court. Um, so today we're just going to talk about some of the most influential Supreme Court cases um, just to get an idea of the kind of cases that they're involved in uh, since World War II or, or World War II and on. So one case you guys probably heard about was the uh, Korematsu versus the U.S., right? In Korematsu versus the U.S., uh, the Supreme Court actually ruled um, that, that Franklin Roosevelt, who was the president at the time, uh, he signed an executive order saying that uh, under the name of national security, um, Japanese Americans on the West Coast could be um, interned. In other words, having their property stripped of them, uh, held in forcefully in military barracks, um, et cetera, right? And this impacted California, Washington, Oregon, and Hawaii. And uh, the Supreme Court, issued probably one of their worst decisions in their history. And they said that the president absolutely had the authority to, uh, to make that decision. Um, and um, of course, uh, many argue this violated, you know, all the basic rights and liberties of the Japanese Americans. You had, you know, obviously the Fourth Amendment, search and seizure was grossly violated. The... Um, takings clause was violated in the fifth amendment you can't take somebody's land if it's not for public purpose and then not compensate them uh they obviously had no trial so their sixth amendment was violated and some even argue that this was cruel and cruel and unusual punishment that um you know they were punished for essentially no wrongdoing other than than what they look like you know so Korematsu versus u.s was universally despised Another big case that came after World War II, and these are all cases, by the way, you guys read about in that one article I assigned. It's, I think it was called 21 Major Supreme Court Decisions or Influential Supreme Court Decisions. Brown versus Board of Education was another one, post-World War II decision. Um, this was rendered in 1954. And uh, this uh, case had to do with um, Supreme Court rules that the prior 100-year ruling that basically said separate but equal is not constitutional. And separate but equal basically said that it was fine to have separate public schools for black people and separate schools for white people, so long as the facilities remained equal. Uh, in other words, the buildings were of the same quality, the teachers were of the same quality. And obviously that just wasn't the case, right, during apartheid. So uh, the uh, Supreme Court ruled that separate but equal is inherently unequal, and they ordered all public schools, K through 12, to be immediately um, desegregated. Now, uh, just because the Supreme Court makes a ruling doesn't mean that uh, it's followed, right? So, you know, you guys know the history of what happens after this decision, right? There was... You know, a lot of resistance, uh, schools refused to desegregate, you know, you know all about the, the civil rights movement explodes onto the scene in the, in the mid to late 50s, grows in escalation throughout the 60s and early 70s. Um, so, you know, it was a very controversial decision at the time. And I should point out that segregation of our schools in, in, especially in the inner cities or urban areas throughout the country, it's just as bad as it ever was back then too, right? So again, just because the Supreme Court renders a ruling doesn't mean it, it becomes automatic by any stretch of the imagination, right? Another major decision, 1966, Miranda versus Arizona, right? And this case said that all defendants, if they're being... Uh, uh, arrested for something, they must have their rights read to them. And you guys know, you guys probably know this, right? You have the right to remain silent, meaning when you're arrested, you do not have to talk, right, at all to the cops. I'll say that one more time. 
If you all find yourself ever in a situation where you're arrested, zip it. Do not speak to the police. Don't say a word, right, about your case. Don't admit guilt. Don't admit anything, right? Because the next part that comes from this case, right, is you have the right to remain silent and anything that you say will be used against you in the court of law, right? So it's just basically protecting defendant rights, right? And this was seen as a very big case too. Uh, last lecture, we talked about another major case from the from post-World War II, and that was Roe versus Wade. We don't have to go back into that, but that was obviously the case dealing with abortion. Um, and that's still arguably one of the most controversial decisions the Supreme Court's ever rendered. Um, you know, it literally ignites protests on both sides, right? And uh, many states, particularly in the South, have actually uh, passed laws banning abortion. So they're in direct violation of the Supreme Court ruling. And their hope, right, is that now that we have a conservative majority in the Supreme Court, it forces the Supreme Court to re-examine Roe versus Wade. And to be honest with you guys, I, I would say there's a probably a pretty good likelihood that Roe versus Wade gets overturned in the next two to three years, more than likely, right? All that would mean is that it would revert it back to the states. It would basically say it's up to the states to determine what they want to do with this, right? Um, another major case was uh, ba the Baki cases in 1978. Uh, the California Regents versus Baki, all this established was the idea of affirmative action in school selection. It said colleges may consider race when deciding who to admit into their schools, right? Um, and this obviously has been a very controversial decision as well. Uh, Bush versus Gore in 2000, the Supreme Court effectively ended the presidential election in 2000. You guys may have heard about this. Back in 2000, George W. Bush and Al Gore were in like a virtual tie. You need 270 votes to win the Electoral College. Uh, and uh, Gore had 267 and Bush 246. And it came down to one state in Florida. And Bush won by like a razor thin margin of like 500 votes. And then Florida under law out of 10 million votes cast, it, it, it triggered an automatic recall. So they had to recount all the votes. And then, uh, but the problem is, is the certification of needing to certify a winner, that date had passed. But many of Gore's supporters said, well, it's showing through the recount that we're about to win. Bush's lawyers were saying, no, we passed the certification date. And it came up to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court ruled, nope, the recount must end. And effectively, Bush became president. They decided the election. Now, what was controversial about this, of course, guys, is that there were the five judges that ruled in favor of Bush were all conservative judges, and the four that ruled in favor of Gore were all the liberal judges. So it kind of showed the whole like partisan divide uh, coming into play in the Supreme Court. Another major case, Lawrence versus Texas. This struck down uh, sodomy laws in the United States. Um, it basically said that you cannot, um, you know, Texas had a law in place that banned um, anything but um, uh, tradition, uh, you know, uh, anything, basically any acts, uh, gay acts were seen as illegal, right? And this bill struck it down, the Supreme Court decision. And it paved the way for the gay rights movement, right? To gain steam. Uh, DC versus Heller, uh, for any gun rights activists out there, people who very favor the second amendment, this validated the second amendment. It said that DC and Chicago who tried to both pass bans on handguns was unconstitutional it said no city, no town, no state in the country may ban your right to have a handgun. They can have background checks. They can have various regulations but they cannot outright ban your right to own arms. And it, and it stated very strongly in this case that all homeowners have the right to bear arms and that that shall never be infringed, right? So they struck down two big bans, one in Chicago, one in DC. 
Citizens United was 2010. Uh, in this case, uh, it basically gave corporations the right to spend as much money as they possibly want for purposes of, of political campaign advertising during elections. It used to be serious restrictions, and it said what? Corporations, because they're made up of people, have the First Amendment right, which is obviously a perverse reading of the law, right? So now corporations can spend unlimited money buying newspaper ads for and against candidates, running radio ads, um, uh, buying spots on television. And of and they guess what? The most controversial part, they don't have to reveal who they are, right? Who's behind? This led to the whole rise of super PACs and, and all that, right? And then another big one, and we'll end it here, was Ogrefall versus Hodges, 2015. And that basically legalized gay marriage, which has been obviously a controversial on both sides as well, right? So uh, you guys be well. Take care.